everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron on the Para-X Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Merry meet everybody and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Tonight my guest is Robert Rubin and he'll be introducing his new tarot deck to us and it's called the No More Hiding Tarot. That's kind of, hmm, I'm curious about that. Um, Robert started out as a practitioner of the esoteric in the San Francisco Bay Area, where he was first introduced to the practice of magic and psychic science at the young age of 12. Over 20 years of experience and hundreds of students trained, he's now a leading Taro authority in the Philippines and the founder of the Museum Philippine. And so, if you have any questions or comments during the show, you can, if you're in the Parex chat room, Come and join us, and if you're not here, come over to Para-X Radio Network and, um, dot com, and you can ask comments and questions and enjoy it. So, Robert, you know what? It's been years <laughs> since years, we've seen years. you last. Yep. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, you know, Marla, um, if you don't mind me just saying this live on the air, I remember in 2012 when I released my first book, Defense of Occultism, you were the first person to give me an interview on a podcast. And I said to myself, if ever this lovely lady needs me as a guest, I'd always be here for her. So it's it's a very big honor to be here with you again. Congrats on your lovely deck that you created. I actually saw some out in the wild here in the Philippines, and I showed you some photos of it. So I know. Also come a long way. <laughs> yeah, we we crossed the water somewhere somehow. Yeah, it's like like wow, cool. Marla's deck is here. That's amazing. Yeah, of all places where it would show up, right? Mm-hmm. I had one for sale at my center, and it sold like hotcakes. So like, wow, the kids were the students were fighting over it. <laughs> well, yeah, I hope somebody won. That's you know happy. Um, <laughs> instead of like, okay, I bought it, but mm, now, well, maybe not. Take it, send it, send it, sell it secondhand, right? Right. Well, yeah, I, I don't think they do that. I'm sure they're happy with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, okay. So before we talk about your new deck, um, uh-huh. what have you been up to with Mysterium Philippines? What's been going on there? Well, you know what? Uh, to be totally honest, Mysterium Philippines have pretty much spearheaded the way for intuitive education here in the Philippines. We are now the largest intuitive community in the Philippines with nearly 1,000 members and graduates. And we are the ones responsible for hosting and implementing the first in history Philippine TarotCon, supported by Tarosophy Tarot Association through Marcus Katz. So we've really been, you know, bringing tarot and intuitive practices to the forefront. Uh-huh. Um, our numbers are growing. We have a lot of new members. We have a new learning center here in Quezon City. And we are really encouraging and supporting the vision of the community of creating a safe space to develop and celebrate intuitive potential. So that's what we've been up to. Uh, during the pandemic, we became a safety hub for a lot of people who wanted to meet people but couldn't get out. So mm. we, we did a very quick shift to online learning, which we proved to be very successful. And now we're just continuing it and just taking it to the next level with TarotCon 2 happening this November 17th. So just a lot of progress and a lot of hard work going on in our community. 
You're busy. You're keeping busy well. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I'll just say that one thing also in 2022, when my life wasn't really working so well, me and an old friend, Wade Law, launched a show called Magic.TV. And we interview different well-known occult authors and practitioners about their practices to kind mm-hmm. of give like a real world take to it. And we are now launching our fourth season of that this June 20th. So if you guys want to check that out, you can visit magic.tv on Facebook, or you could look it up on YouTube. We have a lot of wonderful episodes we've done there. That sounds great. You're creative all over the place. Yeah, or trying, trying to be. <laughs> or trying yeah, to be. You, you yeah. know, the, the creative process, you keep trying. You never know if you do something good or, or not. You have to just tip your put toe in the water and see if it happens and it doesn't. But so far, so good for exactly. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So let's start talking about this deck because I'm Mm -hmm. going to say I'm going to use the word a couple of times when we're talking about it because it's unique. Okay, and that's a good thing. Um, So so what do you mean by no more hiding, Taro? All right. That's a very good question, Marla. And I'm glad to say this for the first time on air. Hiding is something that no person should have to do because when you're hiding, you're in fear, okay? And there's so many things people hide that shouldn't have to be hidden. One, for example, one of the proudest things I have in this deck is the modular lover's card. If you're a tarot reader, there are three different lover's cards to choose from in my deck. There's one for the standard heterosexual couples. There's one for lesbian couples. And there's one for gay couples. Because it wouldn't be a pr- proper example if, you know, I'm a gay man. And then the lover's card I'm looking at is a man caressing a woman. That doesn't relate to me. So part of this was I wanted there to be no more hiding in the most beautiful thing in the world, which is love. That's where it started. Like, why should somebody have to hide how they love? Because love is pure and love is beautiful. Now, after that, that actually kind of put me in a huge rabbit hole because I realized it wasn't just through that that we're hiding things. There's so many things that individuals hide and don't want to come out in the forefront for because they're afraid of being mocked, persecuted, you know, made fun of, insulted. Like, for example, um, in my deck, I've made the Queen of Cups. It's subtitled The Single Mom. Why did I say that there's no more hiding with single moms? Because I've actually met hardworking single moms here in the Philippines who are ashamed of being single moms because society here has labeled them as something called um, disgracia, which means basically you've disgraced the family, which is total bolted because (laughs) these women are dedicating their lives to do two parents' roles. So why should they hide this beautiful thing? I mean, like now that I'm single, because I got a divorce in 2022, a single mom is actually a plus to me. It's like, wow, you're a single mom? I already respect you, especially if you're taking good care of your kid. So all in about, I've looked at different aspects of life, of people, how they tend to hide the best of themselves. And I kind of put it together in the deck, which is no more hiding. I got the word no more hiding from X-Men First Class when my favorite character there, Magneto, said it. No more hiding. Because we should be authentic in our intuitive truths. We should share what's best of us to the world. There's no need to hide these things. If you're gay, unless, of course, you're in some ancient backwater country which has not come to terms with, you know, social justice, you should not have to hide that you're gay. You should not have to hide that you're a light worker or a dark worker or a witch or a Bitcoin entrepreneur or an activist. These are all beautiful aspects of people. And the deck is encouraging authenticity at its core. I hope that answers the question for you. It does. And, you know, hiding, I think, have you noticed, too, that people are afraid to be read because they're afraid that something is going to come out that either they know or don't know and the whole world is going to find out? Yeah, that happens a lot to me in my tarot readings. And I tell people I don't give people bad news and I respect the privacy of everybody I work with. So you're either going to trust me or you're not. You see, but I tell people straight up, you don't need to hide if we're talking to me. I'm a safe space. I let people feel safe. That's why I've been reading Cairo for 28 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and maybe it's because also people think 
they have something to hide, but they don't know what it is, too, you know, because you, it's like shadow work. You know, you don't know um, who you are, what you are, you know, you, you just some people don't delve that deeply. So they're afraid that you're going to find something that they didn't know. And that mm-hmm. would probably freak them out. Well, that's another thing, too, because a lot of people are pr- afraid of judgment, right? So that's mm-hmm. why they hide. But I tell people, do you realize you're getting judged every day, whether you like it or not? Mm-hmm. And I give them an example. If you go to Starbucks and you order a coffee, the, the tea drinkers will say you're crazy because that's bad for you. While if you order tea, the coffee drinkers are going to tell you you're crazy because that's bad for you. So either way, you're going to get judged. And knowing that you're going to get judged, you might as well just live authentically. Because I've seen too many people, Marla, have to live in pain and live in suffering because they had to hide what was really them, their authentic selves. I mean, don't you think that that's the worst thing that you have to hide, your authentic true self? Like, for example, I, I, felt, I said this at my deck soft lunch. Although I don't like to go into details about it, my late father lived the last few years of his life as a very bitter and angry man because something that was very true to him and authentic to him he had to hide because where he was living, the town was so backwater that they could not accept what he really was. And they kept on telling him, oh, you can't come out with that. You can't talk about that. Hide it. And the funny thing is, when I lived in that city for some time, they did the same thing with my passion for occultism. The people in that town, not all of them, but a lot of them were like, "Ah, ah no, 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 you can't talk about these things. You can't care about these things. It's taboo. What would people say? They would say that time and time again. And it wasn't until later on in my life through therapy that I realized that that society was trying to, pardon me for using the word, rape me of my authenticity. And I'm glad I didn't give in to it. But Mm -hmm. imagine how many people out there have to hide that they're an artist because their family wants them to be a doctor. Or have to hide that they're gay because their parents want to have grandchildren. Or have to hide that they trade crypto because some people say that it's a sham when in fact it's not. The list goes on and on. And the purpose of this deck is to encourage on a scale level, no more hiding. Let's all be authentic. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things about readings and people knowing each other and digging deep and going down the rabbit hole and coming back up. I mean, you know, and, and I still think a lot of people are afraid to be read because, you know, mm-hmm. they, because there are people that are reading who aren't, uh, they shouldn't be. <laughs> I'm trying to say it. I, right. I agree. I agree with you 100% on that. So I tell the viewers out there, treat your readers like you would treat your attorney. So if you can't trust the person as a lawyer, you can't trust them as a reader. Because if you're going to just some sham rinky-dink reader and they get information about you, I haven't even heard stories where you get blackmailed, especially in this mm-hmm. country. Yeah. So you got to be very careful with who you go to with these sensitive things because sometimes, as I said in my first book, Defensive Occultism, you'll experience a misfortune telling. A, a, a practice where... The reader is using, they're giving bad news to the client just to make more money off them. Mm -hmm. So with that, I agree with you. Some people don't deserve the reader at all. Yeah, well, there's the ones that say, okay, well, um, here, uh, come back in a week. And and every week, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's just like some quack doctors, you know, come back every week, you know. (laughs) Well, you don't need to come back. And you're paying them every week. Yeah, they'll say something like, oh, my God, something really horrible is going to happen to you, but I can't see it clearly right now. But if you come back next Friday, I'll be able to see it carefully. That's what we call double dipping in the industry, and it's a really uh, it's a really foul practice. Um, we actually have a registry of readers who do that in, in the Philippines. So mm-hmm. if you get put on that list, that's a bad thing. That's like, all right, this person's known to do conny tactics, or they'll tell you stuff like, oh, Marla, you know, your twin flame is being blocked by you and only by buying this $500 candle (laughs) will be able to lift this curse. I mean, that's a really low tactic to pull because you're preying on the vulnerability of the person coming to you for a reading. 
Well, there's a scare tactic, too. If you don't come back and yeah. wait, something really bad is going to happen to you. Exactly. That's what we call putting them under the either. So I always tell people if the cost is too exorbitant, it's usually cheaper to get a second opinion from a mm-hmm. more trusted source. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm jumping around a little bit, but who did the I'm artwork? Fun, no problem. <laughs> okay, well, the, the artwork was digitally done. Um, I used a combination of digital art, of personal editing, of AI. It was a cohesive thing. I did this because my my senior in tarot, Marcus Katz, the founder of the Tarosity Tarot Association, released his epically beautiful Tarot of the Everlasting Day deck. And we, he sold it here in the Philippines, Tarot Con, and I'm madly in love with it. And I followed suit. I asked, Marcus, did you do these work yourself? He said, no, I used the technology of the time. I used AI. It looks beautiful. And he said, his logic was very clear. He said, the time it takes to make one tarot card would take months on end. Multiply that times 78. He said, I would not live to see my deck. So mm-hmm. I really wanted to see my deck in creation. And personally, you know, you've always known me as a writer. I was mm-hmm. never an artist. Right. So when this technology came to the forefront, I just jumped on it. Because if Martha said to me, because he's the guy I look up to in tarot around the world. I, he's like my idol when it comes to tarot. He's done so much for the community, I can only hope to do half of what he's done. When he told me he did this deck in AI, I said, I'm going to jump on board that. If it does it as fast as you say. And I was impressed. But of course, I also did my own touch to it, my own editing. I did my own modification of the art. But the hump of me being an, uh, not being an artist just wasn't there. So I had to find a way of crossing that. The cards are gorgeous. Honest to God, they're gorgeous. <laughs> and I'm, if I was going to do another deck, I would hire you to do the, the, the artwork. Because it, it's, first of all, I thought they were a picture. Because, okay, I'm only looking at them through your website and stuff um, mm-hmm. or your Facebook. So I can't really tell exactly. But I'm thinking, oh, my God, who who took those photographs? And then I kept digging around and digging around. And, and I saw that it was not bad completely. But they are so different. Um, mm-hmm. I, and I told you this. I'm going to say the word again. Unique. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, just them in, its, in of itself. It's worth to have the deck. Seriously. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. But, okay, so um, let me see. Let me see. So, okay, um, we're going to talk about the fact that um, they're not run-of-the-mill decks. I mean, in fact, um, well, start out with the suits. So, Because there was one that I didn't recognize, kind of. Go ahead. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we have the four basic suits. Um, that we followed the four basic suits of the tarot cards, but this time instead of using swords, we replaced it, or I replaced it with pens. Why did I replace it with pens? Because quite frankly, we don't really solve conflicts anymore swinging swords. All right, I don't think you'd see too many people outside of Hollywood Boulevard who carrying a sword or a cosplay convention. But nowadays, all of the conflicts are done through what communication, through writing, legal documents, agreements. That's why. Instead of making the sword all about uh, the suit all about swords, say so why do we make it pens? Because that's where we sign our agreements. That's where we sign our authority. That's how we express our communication, and that just fit into the deck perfectly. For the suit of coins, I wanted to tap into the crypto bandwagon, especially uh, Bitcoin, because I am a Bitcoin holder. And show that this is the future of finance. It's not going to replace traditional finance, but it's definitely going to be part of uh, the financial system on, on a global level. I don't think it's going anywhere. Now, the other suits, which were the cups, was all about relationships, and that's standard. But the wands were subtitled what I called the movement. It shows the power of passion, of advocacy unleashed, that For a positive thing, it could do good things for the world, but it can also be used negatively. So this shows what happens when people's passions are united, when people come together, when the movement starts from the ground level, the one fanatical person who believes in their movement to the burden of what you've created once it turns into something gigantic. So it could even, positive or negative, it'll still have a burden to it. 
positive or negative. I'll just tell you that. It's going to be, you're going to have to do logistics. You're going to need to take care of people. You're going to need to continue to contain the message. These are all parts of an advocacy movement. So the fourth suit of, of wands is really all about that. Um, we've seen some positive advocacy movements in the world, and we've seen some negative ones, and I don't want to mention any in particular because I've got friends on both sides. But it just showcases what people can do when they come together, when they believe in a cause. It just shows how mighty and how powerful that can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay, so then there's the other thing that I was thinking about. Um, mm -hmm. It seems that I saw in each card of the major arcana, or maybe not each card, mm -hmm. but in the major arcana, there are variants for each card. Yes. Now, well, not that, for each, but not some. for each. Some of my, yeah, some of my favorite ones I have had, a, I have had a variant of, like, aside from the lovers, which I'm most proud of, the emperor has two different variants. There's the standard emperor, there's the boss, and there's the dark worker. Um, I put that there because those all represent the duty and the responsibility of what the, the, the emperor has to go through. The dark worker being sometimes he has to make those decisions that people don't find him popular for, but he's got to do it anyway. Or sometimes you kneeling in front of the dark worker is like you kneeling before the emperor saying, hey, you know what? It's like a very Don Corleone movement from the Godfather. Like, oh, God, I've got to go to the dawn. And that's the energy of the emperor cards there. Now, the mage has two variants, and so does the high priestess. These are two cards I'm very, I'm very proud of. The High Priestess variant is the witch. And the idea behind the High Priestess card is in modern times, the witches are even teaching regular classes in your universities. Next thing you know, they're like, hey, you know what? I think Miss Brooks is a witch. She's teaching math, but I think she's a witch. Exactly. Exactly. Now she's influencing the youth, not just through her coven, but by being an educator. Yeah, she dresses like a witch. She has a pentacle, but she's teaching math. She's teaching sociology, and people remember her, and she becomes that educating matriarch through the educational system because she won't hide anymore. The Fool has a few variants as well. Not all suits have alternate variants, but there are a few that I'm very proud of. I'm going to put El Loco up in the chat room because I just, I'm yeah, digging no, around can here. I, can I share the story about El Loco? Mm-hmm. Because uh, I know you're in California. A lot of things are legal in California, right? And there's a <laughs> right. lot of potheads, a lot of stoners, a lot of guys into psychedelics. And a lot of the times, they're just innocently, ah, I need some shrooms, I need some weed, this and that. But, right? They don't realize that these are doorways in the spirit world. And just by ex you know, uh, extracurricular use of cannabis, next thing you know, they're, they're, I'm not saying it happens to everyone, but it can be a gateway to them entering our world. Like somebody could come to you, Marlo, you know what? I never believed in any of this magic or spiritual stuff. I'm just a stoner, but I'm seeing spirits. Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> That's a local. You see what I mean? It's like, welcome to our world, Steve. Welcome to our world. Your use of these plant medicines has opened you up to these energies. So that's the whole theory behind El Loco. And that was dedicated to one of my best friends in the world, Jerome. If he's listening, Jerome, I love you, man. I just, you know, I looked at it and I, I smiled, you know, and I'm still trying to look. It said it wasn't going to load for me, so I'm going to find another one. Um, but in the meantime, let me get back to the thing, because I think there's a question in the chat room. Sure, so I've got three windows open and I'm going, Bleh. all right. Um, <laughs> she wants to know, she says, someone gave her a tarot deck of cats because I love all yeah, feel yeah. because I love all felines, but it never felt right for me to use. Why is that? Mm -hmm. What do you think? That's a good question. You know, some decks just don't work with you. Like I go on record and tell people this and as an occultist, I'm probably going to get laughed at. I've never been able to effectively use the talk tarot of Alistair Crowley. It just doesn't work for me. I have several copies of it, but it doesn't really, I can't use it for readings. However, it doesn't mean I can't use it. You could probably use that deck for meditation, for self-discovery, for spellcraft. So try to go outside the standard realms of just reading with a deck 
and see how else this can do. Like, since you love cats, instead of using it for readings of other people, you could put it on top of your altar and draw a card every day as your meditation card for the day and get greeted by a lovely feline. Mm -hmm. That's a good that's a good point. Hang on, I'm going to try and get this one thing in. It's, don't know no problem why, at all. Don't know why it's not loading up. Oh, that one will. Okay. I think the one I want to, but, you know, oh, no, it's just un, unable to upload. Mm. All right. Um, well, there's a, <laughs> there's a question in the chat room that everybody was going to ask you anyway. Um, she said she can't find the deck anywhere online. Is it out mm -hmm. yet? Okay, officially it's not, it'll be publicly for sale on TarotCon 2024. That's when it's going to be for sale. But on my fan page on Facebook, at Rob Rubin Readings, there are pre-selling promos. So you can actually buy the deck early or buy uh, purchase it early, and it comes with a ton of freebies with it, like free readings, free prints and the stuff. So go to my fan page on Facebook, at Rob Rubin Readings, and I will actually tag it right now, the pre-selling incentive and the packages that go with it so that you guys can all have something to choose, to choose from. Okay, that's good. Um, so it, with all the extra cards, how many cards are in the deck? Exactly 100 cards, Marla. Whoa, because I saw, okay, yep. I, I was looking at your thing, um, something that you were doing on your Facebook thing, and you were holding the deck of cards, and it seemed a little bigger than normal. Um, yep. That means if those are all the variants, right? Yes, it does. Um, and then, but the, the point of the deck is you could use it in any way you seem fit, but part of the deck is customizing the cards in the deck for the reader so like one thing that i like to do with my deck is before i give you a reading i will show you many or if not all of the variants one by one and i will ask you okay marla of these two cards which one resonates with you of these two so basically i'm taking cards out and i'm letting you select which cards uh which cards are it's kind of like modularly creating the, some of the cards just for you. So, mm -hmm. with that being said, um, you could use all de all cards if you want, or you can just replace cards left and right, with, with, however you see fit. Okay, yeah, because you know I'm thinking, oh, how do you shuffle all those cards? You know, that that would be a little bit tricky. And there's yeah. two editions: there's a pocket edition of the deck, and then there's the standard edition. So, for those who want one on the go. Uh, if you get one, if you order one before Carolcon, you'll definitely be given a no more hiding official silk pouch to go with it. Uh, the standard edition comes it's in its own lovely black pin with the no more hiding logo on it. So, yeah, I mean, there's something for everybody. Yeah, you're being very generous. I mean, I wish people would go over to um, the Facebook page. It, there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff there. Um, and, you know, we'll give out the the website and stuff all down the line. But, I mean, this is one of those decks, you know, you get tired of people saying, okay, can I come on your show and, and, you know, I have a new deck. Well, I like to do that. I like to help people. But a lot of them are just kind of cookie-cutter ones, you know? Mm -hmm. they're, they're And they work, and they're lovely. And, and you know, everybody that can make a, a thing is, is perfectly wonderful. But this is... Between the artwork and the variants and, you know, everything else that goes around, I mean, this is really important. And then you're giving away a lot of stuff, too. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you're being really generous. So, um, yeah, this is, it's not happening all the time, you know. Well, and, that's part of reaching the right audience. you got to give them values worth. Um, I like to tell people that if you support this deck by purchasing it, you're not just getting a deck you're getting so much more to come with it. So, I mean, it's something that I'm very proud of. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Cece put the uh, link to the Facebook in the, in the, yeah. Wait a minute. Something else. Um, she wrote, sorry, I'm sometimes using two t top deck together, and it's hard to shuffle. <laughs> yeah. Some people have trouble shuffling even a regular deck, you know, because sometimes you get decks and they're really stiff. 
and you yeah. can't really do it. And then something, I mean, they're so stiff that when you go to shuffle, you they kind of crack, you know? Yep. But the good ones, you know, you, you work with them and they just get easier and easier and they're happy and everybody's happy and you're not going to worry about having a new one. Um, yeah, and I found one out... One of my how- favorite tarot decks had that problem. Um, one of my favorite tarot decks of all history is the True Black Tarot. And mm-hmm. tarot readers all around the world love it, but we call it the unshuffleable deck <laughs> because you cannot shuffle it for your life's for your for your life. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. But when they came out with the white variant, the different version, the Epimere deck, I they solved that problem and made the cards actually shuffleable. They're both very beautiful and collector's items for anybody who's into the tarot. And you know, I, I found the hard way that if one card gets damaged in any way, um well enough to use but when you shuffle it and you whatever it keeps popping up because my cat took a bite out of a card mm-hmm, yeah the, the unicorn I the feeling. yeah so Ooh. yeah <laughs> he didn't like the unicorn i guess but and my and dog I, did the same thing to my deck one of my favorite decks that mm-hmm. i've used to read for so many important people when she was a puppy i come in one day and i see she's nibbling on a bag and she's actually devouring some cards from this very special deck of mine so like Obviously, you don't like this deck. Okay. <laughs> well, and the thing of it is, I still use it because it's just a little pinhole. But for some reason, mm. it will jump out more often than not because just of that little uh, hole in it, it just kind of mm-hmm. pops out more than you want it to pop out. So, yeah. All right. Anyway, we are going to take a break. So, everybody um, stay, stay put, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Way. There's more Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks right after these important messages. I was in the hospital with my son for 18 months. When he got injured, I wasn't prepared, but I knew I had to be strong. When I was told about John's injury, I was in complete shock. I just remember rushing into his room and giving him a big hug and letting him know I was there. These veterans and families are just a few of the heroes we serve at Homes for Our Troops. For thousands of severely injured veterans, everyday life is filled with barriers. It was really the the little things throughout the house. Counters that you can't roll up to. I had to drag my wheelchair down steps. I want to help, but he is so determined. At Homes for Our Troops, we build specially adapted custom homes with features like wheelchair access, roll-in showers, and automatic door openers that allow them to function independently and focus on their recovery and family. This house is freedom. It's hope. It's a new beginning. This house has given me my family back. To learn more, visit hfotusa.org. Throughout time, events have occurred that have shaped human history. Spirit voices from the past have many stories to tell. And for the past several years, channelers Barry and Connie Strom have been conducting live channeling sessions and relaying those stories and messages from those on the other side. We invite you to tune in to Barry and Connie's new show, Channeling History, on the Para-X Radio Network, every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, as they relay the messages of those voices from the past, the ones who have witnessed history firsthand, and those who have made history themselves. Hi everyone, it's Marla. If you like tonight's episode of Stirring the Cauldron and the archive podcast as well, take a look at the show's YouTube channel and check out the dozens of shows that are there just waiting to be heard. New shows are added each week, and while you're there, why not subscribe? It's free. And if you click on that tiny little bell icon at the top of the page, you'll be notified when new shows are available. Just go to YouTube.com and then type in Stirring the Cauldron Pair X and the link will appear. Just like magic. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. My guest is Robert Rubin, and we're talking about his new deck, No More Hiding Taro. Um, Rob, do you do readings on yourself? Okay, that's a very good question, but 
I can, but what I tell my students in tarot is you could do it, but ideally the best barbers don't cut their own hair. Right. So think about that. That like if the best barber in the world cut his own hair, it'd still be weird. So I would much prefer to have somebody else read for me than me read for myself, because most of the time when I read for myself, it ends up pretty much, you know, horse backwards. So, because I'm too, I'm too unobjective about it. So, I'd probably like more likely tell you, Marla, could you draw a card for me and just lay it on me than me deluding myself. So that's the funny thing. Yeah, I think that too. I think we know each other too well, and then we can kind of tweak things. You know, if we don't like what mm-hmm. we see, we make we make an excuse for it, and it's not going to happen. Very true. Yeah. Very very true. Yeah, I always, I, I don't, I know people that really do. On themselves, others that don't, but I'm with you. I don't want to read myself. Um, yeah, Marla, right. can I throw down one thing before we continue? Of course. Yeah, part of the No More Hiding campaign is I'm an advocate of Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. This is Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. And I just part of the No More Hiding campaign is to tell all men out there that you are hardworking men. Many of you are still are good men. Okay, There are good men and there are bad men out there. And I'm talking to the good men out there. And many of you are fathers, brothers, sons, soldiers, fighters of the community. But the burden of being a man gets too too much at times. And as part of the campaign, I'm asking everybody listening out there, you know, just say something nice to a good man in your life. Tell him you appreciate him for all the sacrifices he's making. Because you'd be surprised how helpful that's going to be for them to continue being that positive beacon in other people's lives this men's feelings and men's mental health matters too no more hiding especially with that good i like that because i think the good guys always finish last <laughs> that's what you hear but it, exactly. it, it's probably true because you, you, you exactly just never know all right now spreads do you have a booklet of course that goes along with the deck right uh, yeah, that will be released during TarotCon. The deck itself right now, if you buy it, does not come with a booklet. But if you get the Emperor package, you get a, a complimentary booklet with it. But any package you get, you will get a PDF once it's done. It's going to be officially launched during TarotCon. Um, hmm. Because one thing about it is I'm also kind of eco-friendly. And a lot of people just toss out these booklets. Yeah. Versus if I can give you a PDF, you could read it on your phone. and you know, you have it wherever you need to go. It's like, oh, God, you know, what does it mean again? The uh, the the card, let's say, balance. I don't really get this card. It'll be available for you in real time. Because if I put it as a booklet, it's not only additional cost. It's also likely just to get thrown away. Um, as a reader, I've caused that. I've done that sin too many times. So I want to make it more applicable to the modern day reader. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because everything's going, you know, like with Kindle and everything. everything you read it mm-hmm. on your phone, you read it on the computer, and, and people don't have books. I, I bet there's people out there that have never picked up a real book. Seriously. That's very sad. That's sad. <laughs> take, my, take my liquor, take my coffee, just don't take my books. Yeah, I mean, just to have something in your hand, you know, and, and something tangible, it's always a good thing. Um, so let's talk about spreads for a minute because everybody mm-hmm. has their own favorites. You know, some people do yeah. a one card spread, a three card spread, you know, past, present, future. Mm-hmm. Then they have ones, you know, with 56 cards. Um, what do you, yeah. what kind of spreads do you prefer? Well, so my tarot consultations, and for those of you who are tuning in and interested in having one, you can go to my website, www.robrubinreadings.com. Um, for my personal tarot consultations, I do a combination of different spreads. I have what I call a past, present, future spread, where I tell my client where they've been, where they are, and where they could be going. That's usually followed up by a standard Celtic cross because, well, why not? And if you're if you're a professional in tarot, you could do a Celtic cross in ten minutes. And then to wrap that up, I do what I call a trajectory spread, where I tell the client. This is a snapshot of what would have happened if you never had this reading to begin with. And I tell them, if you hear something and you like it, leave it alone. While if you hear something and you don't like it, well, now you can change it. And I always affirm to every single client I work with, 
no reading is ever set in stone. And then the final thing I do, which Marcus Katz is very impressed by, is I have this way of condensing five cards into what I call a pyramid spread, which kind of shows a, a concise past, apex, and potential future of any question you ask. So if you ask a question, I'll draw five cards, and the two cards on the left show what's been going on, and the top card is kind of like the most important aspect of that question, and the two cards following show what you could look forward to or what you need to watch out for. Marcus actually um, was very impressed by that and how I could stitch all of those cards together in just one cohesive way. Mm, that's interesting. Um, we got another question from the chat room. Go um, ahead. Is there a particular surface or type of cloth that's best to place the cards on when do, doing readings? You know what? I, I will share with you all a little tactic. If you could get a very absorbent tarot bag that does a dual surface, why? Because a lot of the times people use tarot cloths to protect their cards. But actually, you can also use tarot cloths to wipe the counter before you do the reading, if you get what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to protect your precious cards. So if you have like a... like. I don't know if you guys drink out there, but one of the best things to have is a Crown Royale pouch. Because oh. <laughs> you know, if you drink the, with that, that Canadian, the purple one, for those of you who drink whiskey, Canadian whiskey, it comes with this beautiful purple pouch that's perfect for your tarot cards. And you can wipe on tables with it because they're easy to come by. So <laughs> I tell people that any kind of thing, any kind of pouch that could be used to wipe the surface. Because the purpose of the pouch is to protect the cards. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I I never thought about that bag, but I remember it from a kid. I mean, they've been those bags for years and years and years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I think it's been it's a survey has been taken. A lot of readers use that bag as a tarot pouch. It's very beautiful. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've got my cards in those bags, not the whiskey ones, yeah. but um, <laughs> in the nice ones. But yeah, it's fun. Okay, another question. Um, will you have an app version of the deck for digital on the go use at some point? Um, I wouldn't know how to program an app if my life depended on it. Maybe <laughs> if it gets enough uh, <clears throat> support, if it gets popular enough, and I tie up with like a major publication company like Lost Scarabeo or something, then I don't mind working and collaborating to making that happen. <clears throat> but um, as of the meantime, it's not in the long-term plans for me because I just wouldn't know how to do that. Okay. All right. So um, I popped over to your page, like I said. I go snooping around mm -hmm. all week. I've been, you know, being that way, that way. Um, but mm -hmm. you do live readings on Thursdays sometimes? Yep. I've been doing that since the advent of Facebook Live. It's called Arrow Thursdays, and it goes live every Thursday night at 9.30 p.m. Manila time. And the rule is, if you're a first-timer, all you have to do is share the show on your wall, and you get a free question. But mm. for those who like to tune in, and I've had some clients or, or some viewers for years come to the show, um, they just need to send stars, and depending on the number of stars can equate to the number of questions we, or the number of cards we draw. So, like, 50 stars is one card, 100 stars is two, 250 stars is three, and I throw in an oracle card, and then so on and so forth. Up to, like, if you send 1,000 stars, I'll give you a Celtic cross live on the air. Wow. See? Here goes the generosity again. This is good. <laughs> And, and well, I like to show people the beauty of the tarot. I mean, you see, yeah. there's so much. I'm sure you agree with me on this, Marga. There's so much mystics and and spookiness about the deck, but they miss out on the fact that this can be a very powerful tool for self-discovery, clarity, and empowerment. When people come to me, I make it a point when they leave, they leave with a smile and with hope. That's good. But, you know, I mean, cards come in different, different ways. Some are very, you know, dark and, and creepy and then they have the um hello kitty cards you know about to say that yeah <laughs> it, yeah it runs the gamut and and but mm -hmm. i think there's no right or wrong you know i mean if the mm -hmm. cards are there um and the people are doing proper readings you can read anything you know um yeah. i'm not crazy about hello kitty but you know if that yeah. was the only one i had i mean i i use it 
and mumble under my breath, I think. Um. <laughs> well, I, like what Marcus said when he guessed it on my show, Magic.TV, he quoted it from Top Gun. It's not the plane, it's the pilot. In mm-hmm. other words, um, it's not the deck, it's the reader. Mm-hmm. And um, you could give me literally, the, yeah, the Hello Kitty tarot, and I would also be like, what the hell is this? But I could still read it. It's not my preferred <laughs> deck, but it's the fact that I've already been able to understand the cards enough to do it constructively. Now, what about cards that don't have the same um, cards that most decks have? You know, the, the mm-hmm. major arcana, the, the minor arcana, the, the, I mean, they, I've seen decks that have nothing to do with anything I knew about tarot because they just, you mm-hmm. know, well, this is a, this is a flower and here's a spare tire card. And, you know, what do you think about those? I think that each deck creator is allowed their own artistic expression. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to call your deck a tarot deck, you have to adhere to a certain structure. Like, ideally, you would want that at least, at least 22 major arcana cards and at least a, a representative of the 56 minor arcana cards. However... If you want to do more than that, then that's fine. You could make your deck 90 cards. Mm-hmm. However, if you're not going to follow that structure, then your deck doesn't really qualify anymore as a tarot deck. It's more of an oracle deck, mm-hmm. if you get what I'm saying. Sure. Like, for example, um, Osha Zen came out with a beautiful tarot deck. But I call it a tarot deck because even though the cards were reappropriated in different meanings, you could say, oh, that card is representative of the magician. That mm-hmm. card is representative of the fool. If he stopped doing that altogether, it wouldn't be a tarot deck. It would be an oracle deck. Mm-hmm. So if you're, you, and nobody's saying an oracle deck is bad. I mean, you created yeah. an oracle deck. Yeah. So, but, but the thing is, like, if you're going to call your deck a tarot deck, then people are going to say, okay, well, so where's the swords or where's the fool? Yeah. Or where's the, exactly. the, the high priestess? But if mm-hmm. you're going to call it an oracle deck, then you could literally call it on Marla's Monday night oracle and take 20 photos of Marla on a Monday night. And there's your deck. You get what I'm saying? So that would kill call people. it what it's supposed to be. No, I wouldn't. That'd probably do really well. <laughs> so why not? <laughs> <laughs> They'll turn to stone, but it'll be fine. Um, I've got a couple of people. <laughs> I have a couple of people that would like a reading if you're not busy. Sure, sure. All right. No problem. Ask the question. Um, is there a question? Um, let me see. Who? General or whatever. Let me see. Let me see. They she can just, ask me whatever they want. My only rules are no dates of death and no lottery numbers. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay. In the meantime, let me think about general readings, too, because that, that's pretty mm-hmm. simple. And sometimes the general yeah. readings answer the questions before they're answered, right? They're yeah, asked. That more often than not, yeah. Well, let's try that because um, Tabby wants a, a reading and she didn't give me a question. So let's right, see what so she Tabby got. Tabby wants a general reading. All right, let's see what's going on with her. Okay, Tabby, you're living up to the old saying of Frederick Nietzsche, right? Now, that which does not kill me shall make me stronger. However, drawing the tarot card right now, I, I, I don't know what the ratings are on this show, so I'm going to be PG. The caca has hit the fan in your life, and it didn't turn out too well. But the worst is over. But here's another part to it. Just because the worst is over doesn't mean that you don't need help in your healing process. So tapping into the message of my deck of no more hiding, don't hide the fact that you could use some help right now. Seeing a therapist, getting some help, asking for assistance for whatever it is that happened to you is going to be the right way to move forward because if you're going to try to heal it alone, it may either take longer or may not heal properly at all. And you, darling, deserve healing. Okay, that's good. Um, Ceiling Cat would like a general reading. Okay, another general for Ceiling Cat. And the card you have is the Ace of Swords reversed, meaning to me that you are kind of skirting away from authority and leadership in your life, but I'll be the first to tell you that you are painting yourself into a quicksand corner. Why do I say that? Because if you're trying to avoid leadership, responsibility, uh, command, or taking control, 
what there's a paradox with that because the more you want leadership the less it will be given to you while the more you don't want it the more it's going to be pushed on you so this is kind of like me already telling you that you've got to sit on the throne you've got to step up because the safest hands are your own uh and the more you run away from it the more people are going to notice it and they're going like no we know you don't want it for the wrong reasons so we think you should be the one to take control of this so look out for that okay one more kathy general kathy another general reading for kathy and we have the hot sorry the emperor okay um now here's the thing you're going to be dealing with a very aggressive person in the next couple of months very go-getter um alpha male kind of figure and the thing is don't go head to head with this individual you need to know how to sweet talk them because if you're going to go head to head with them you're not going to win they are they, they're too full of stake and machismo but if you're a little bit more guyly and influency with him um you know you know how to mince words you know how to get under his skin he will more likely if it's definitely a he he will more likely be willing to listen to you than if you were to challenge him head on so for lack of a better word work on your manipulation skills when dealing with this person i'm not going to say too much but people are uh, ceiling cat said that your reading was eerily accurate and Tabby also. So I'm um, just well, thank telling you. people that. Um, Lily will have a okay. general reading. Please link them to my fan page too. I'd like to make new followers if possible. Facebook.com slash Rob Rubin Readings. And Lily, here's a card just for you, a general reading and Nine of Cups reversed. All right, here's the thing, Lily. You are not an emotional dumpster for people around you, okay? I'm getting an energy from Lily that Unfortunately, people like to speed dial her when they are, their lives turn to crap. And in most cases, dear Lily will be there. But you have to learn a very powerful term, Lily, and that's I'm at capacity. You're no one's therapist. Unless you are a therapist, then you need to know to only do it during working hours. Because what I'm seeing is that a lot of people tend to bug you when they've got emotional issues and you just come and save the day. But Lily, the question I'm going to ask you is, who's going to do that for you? You deserve time to yourself as well. Please take care of yourself, Lily. Okay, and we have one more for Bruce. All right, Bruce. Let's look. All right, Bruce, you are right now potential unleashed. What do I mean by this? Whatever you think you've achieved, Bruce, is nothing, nothing compared to what your potential can be. In other words, we're talking early days Muhammad Ali here. We're talking like first years of greatness coming your way. You're only beginning to, it's like an iceberg. You're only beginning to skate the surface of what you're going to do. You, but in like a year to five years time, you're going to remember this reading. You're going to say, damn, even I didn't expect I was going to get that much done. And you're going to be very impressed by what you end up achieving. So more power to you, Bruce. Okay. We've got like uh, four minutes. So I want you to mm-hmm. tell everybody um, what you're up to. And because there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff on your website. Um, you talk about shadow mm-hmm. work and readings and all kinds of stuff. So when people go over to your website, what are they going to find? All right, you're going to find some stories about me. You're going to find YouTube videos. You're going to find educational content, reviews. There's a, there's a function on my website for shop if you want to see my different kind of readings that I offer. It's robrubinreadings.com slash shop. And you can see the whole menu of different services. I do everything from basic tarot readings to past life readings, shadow work readings. Um, there's something for new clients and returning clients. Now, if you're not sold on my ability yet, then you could tune in on my show 10 9 30 p.m manila time every thursday night at facebook.com slash rob rubin readings and you can have your card sample read there if you're a first timer just say hey rob i'm a first timer i like to have my cards read and by sharing the show on your wall i'll gladly give you a freebie but then afterwards you have to buy stars now if you want to get to know me in person um, you can also take some of my classes. I do teach intro to the tarot distance learning anywhere around the world. It's a six-week-long program. 
and you will learn from me and my skilled team of mentors of Mysterium Philippines to develop your tarot gift. Or if you're really in for an adventure, come to the second ever Philippine Tarot Conference this November 17, 2024 at the Podium Hall. Um, you're going to see tarot readers, booths, magicians from all corners of the country. I'll be here. Marcus most likely is coming and a lot of other known personalities of the occult field will be gracing our presence. So we're very excited for that. Okie dokie. Now, um, let's dangle a little carrot because I didn't have to twist too hard, but um, you're going to be one of our class ma- uh, master class teachers down the line, huh? Yes. Yes, I'll be talking about my last book, The Tarot, 78 Spells for 78 Days. I launched that book last Tarotcon. So we're going to be talking about using the tarot as a tool of magic, how you can use each card and how we could go with one of my early philosophies of your tarot is a spell book. Yeah, right offhand, I don't remember which date it was, but you're going to be there. And just for everybody, if you want to know about the classes, um, go to my website, marlabrooks.com, hit the master class button, and it'll take you all the way down to November. We're booked, and it's going to be a lot of people and whatever. And I've already got Rob up there, so you'll know when. And, yeah, that's great. But time's out. So I want to thank you. It, again, it's been way too long, so we don't need to go yeah. like years from now because we'll probably be senile and then it wouldn't matter, right? <laughs> I hope not. I hope we're, we live to a long old age and keep teaching the magics in this world. <laughs> well, the magicians are the ones that can do it. That's for sure. So thank you for being here. And I want to thank everybody for listening in. And until next time, everybody. Blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2024. The Mysterioso March by Kevin McLeod is licensed through Incompetech.com. Thank you.